A nuclear war will kill us all. Quickly or slowly, it will kill all of us. Nuclear war not only devastates the people where it falls, it would over time devastate the world as we know it. The National Command Authority is very simple. The President makes the decision to use nuclear weapons and the Secretary of Defense executes the order. If that doesn't scare the hell out of you right now, I don't know what will. This unthinkable level of injury resides in the hands of a solitary person. Once the decision is made and in the process of being carried out, our systems of checks and balances don't apply. Congress couldn't stop it. The Supreme Court couldn't stop it. And the way it's set up, not even the Secretary of Defense, in theory, has the authority to stop it. I want to make uh, clear that uh, it's not the Secretary of Defense who confirms the President's decision or has the right to veto it, or, nor does anyone else have the authority to overwrite the decision. They may not even necessarily be asked for their advice. And there certainly has been ample talk in the United States of making a preemptive attack. Groups, particularly homogeneous groups, particularly in a hierarchical setting where people are habituated to abiding by the decision of the commander in chief are not necessarily likely to put meaningful breaks on a presidential decision, even though they might regard it as unwise. The result of all of this is that the people have no voice in the most significant decision the United States government can make, whether to destroy another society with weapons of mass destruction and in turn risk being destroyed ourselves. Britain, France, and the United States all made the decision to acquire nuclear weapons with absolutely no democratic debate. There was no debate in the public sphere, and even the parliaments and the Congress in the United States were cut out of those decisions. And actually, I have found since uh, President Trump won the election that my students in classes have begun to say things that they would not say before. Um, I don't know if others of you teach nuclear weapons issues in universities, but in the last 10 months, students have quite explicitly brought up the subject themselves of worrying. Surely he couldn't just use the weapons on his own, right? There must be some way of constraining him. Here's another the use of the language of self-defense that we need to support and get back to, namely the collective self-defense of all the people who might be the victims, if nothing is done, of a horrendous catastrophe. So from the very start of the nuclear age, citizens, scientists as citizens, doctors as citizens, mothers as citizens, uh, everyone as citizens, have contributed to reducing the risks of nuclear weapons, reducing the arsenals of nuclear weapons. If the people of this country do not wish these arrangements to remain in place, are there legal and constitutional tools that can help dismantle those arrangements? There is now a new international treaty open for signature and being signed for the prohibition of nuclear weapons that forbids the use of nuclear weapons and the threat of use of nuclear weapons. And this debate about use of nuclear weapons needs to begin with the frame that the threat and use of nuclear weapons would be a crime against humanity and a crime under international law. And any policymaker that is willing to take that decision forward of the use of nuclear weapons or the threat of use of nuclear weapons should be considered to be an international war criminal from the get-go. We need to have a credible legal guardian within the executive branch to constrain and articulate the legal requirements imposed by Congress. The risk of inadvertent nuclear war has risen to a level that is simply unacceptable. And that is why I have introduced, along with my colleague, Representative Ted Lieu of California and Jim McGovern of Massachusetts, uh, legislation that makes crystal clear that Congress must check the president's authority. The framers gave the power to declare war to Congress. Uh, and, this is why, and this is the motivation and the reason and the foundation for why H.R. 669 and S-200, the Restricting First Use of Nuclear Weapons Act, were introduced by Congressman Ted Lieu of California and our own Senator Ed Markey, as you heard here today, uh, in January of this year. This bill, 
let me repeat it again, prohibits the president, and let me be clear, it prohibits any president and every president uh, from using U.S. armed forces to carry out a first use nuclear strike unless Congress has declared war and authorized such a first strike. It's that simple and it's that straightforward. What can we do? What can you do about it? I think what the two congressmen de described to you today, I cannot say it any better than that. Get behind those two particular pieces of legislation. The future of nuclear decision making in all the other nuclear weapon states hinges on how the United States begins to think about changing its policy about nuclear weapons. I think it's time to get moving again. It's time once again to remind our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers that these are issues that affect every single American family, every single one of us. Congress is a stimulus response institution. There's nothing more stimulating than millions of people emailing and faxing and Facebooking and calling into the United States Congress. That is how you get change. And it can spread just as fast as it did in 1982. It was the blink of a political eye and it was a shock to Washington.